Okay, we have today the start of the last two sets of lectures for this program. Um, I shifted from the first week to the second, just in interest of schedule. So first of all, this morning, Georg Bergner is going to give us the first of his three lectures about matrix models and their lattice simulation. So over to you, Georg. Okay, thank you, David. And thank, I first would like to thank the organizers, of course, for inviting me to this beautiful place here and also for the, their kind hospitality here. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to follow the first part of this program, and therefore I'm also not completely adjusted to the, to the time zone. And uh, the organizers have asked me to um, cover here in these lectures um, matrix models and relation to gauge gravity duality and simulations on the lattice. So um, actually my area of expertise are rather the simulation parts, but I will also go into these kind of matrix model background a little bit in the beginning, um, uh, mainly to also stimulate uh, the discussions about this. So my main um, outline of this talks is that I first want to uh, talk a little bit about the background and the history of this BFSS uh, conjecture and the relation to M theory and also uh, the relation to low dynam uh, dimensional analogs of gauge gravity duality and that we know all in, in four dimensions. And the main message um, is that these kind of matrix models that I'm going to discuss seem to be at the first sight uh, very simple. It's just a quantum mechanical system um, with a large symmetry group. But the theory, um, as we have all learned, reveals much more complicated structure of the dynamics than one might expect from these simple theories. And this is also why they have been so uh, widely used in this uh, applications to M theory and, and string theory. And I, that's why I also want to um, first discuss a little bit about this origins of these models before I talk about the simulations of the latter, on the lattice. And then in the later parts of the talk, I will also talk a little bit about the fact that at first it seems like this is just quantum mechanics. So it's a nice student's project that you can program uh, it seems that you, you can kind of program this uh, very easily in a few days, but I will uh, show later that there are conceptual and also um, some practical uh, problems which make it much more simply, uh, more complicated than expected to deal with these kind of theories numerical. But um, the outlook I think is uh, on this part is very positive. So um, I think nowadays um, we have learned how to simulate these theories and um, really we can address important physics questions now. So as I said, in the first part, I will talk a little bit about the theoretical background, why there are people in the audience that uh, might be more experts on this part than I am. I still want to add this here as explained um, to, to explain a little bit why this uh, has a, um, quite a complicated physics. And also to, for, because for me, the discussions concerning these kind of theoretical background um, is uh, the most important part in such kind of programs like here, uh, because I know um, a lot of details also for, for their for the rest of the part. So in the second part, then I will talk a little bit about the simulations on the lattice, what kind of lattice discretizations you, you can use and um, what kind of advantages, certain ways to formulate the theory on the lattice have. And then in the last part, I will get um, a, at least a partial overview of the results for this matrix models simulations. 
I certainly cannot cover everything that has been done for these kind of theories because many different approaches have been used uh, even apart from, from lattice simulations. Okay, this is the theory I'm going to consider here, which is basically a, um, a dimensional reduction of n equals one 10 dimensional uh, supersymmetric, uh, n equals one supersymmetric young Moore's theory to, uh, um, to one dimension, um, which makes this here, this kind of quantum mechanical model. So you have this um, in this and kind of naive compactification you just get from the field strength in the uh, compactified direction, you get these kind of scalar fields here and one gauge field is remaining, uh, which is in this uh, covariant, appears in the covariant derivatives here. And since everything uh, has to be super symmetric, you have here some additional, uh, fermions, which are Majorana vial fermions in 10 dimensions. So they uh, have an additional um, Majorana symmetry, uh, property here, um, which we'll uh, later uh, uh, discuss in more detail when it comes to the numerical simulations. Then there's a deformation, which is called usually the BMN model. Uh, which adds an additional kind of mass term like structure. I will later uh, in this session tell a little bit more about this background or ma make at least some short comments about comments about this uh, theoretical background of this uh, kind of additional terms here. Um, there are a lot of related matrix theories. So you can um, <clears throat> have also a, re a reduction to two dimensions. I think it was discussed here in some research talks and, and also mentioned uh, by David in his talk about lattice simulations of supersymmetric theories. Then you can also reduce the, uh, the um, n equals one uh, theory in four dimensions to um, one and two dimensions. And this will lead to a slightly simpler uh, theory in uh, the quantum mechanics case. Usually this kind of theories is considered first if one starts uh, lattice simulations. So people have started first to learn about these kind of theories just as first toy models before one uh, has considered the, the more complicated BFSS model. Then there's also um, something that I will mention only very briefly. This is, uh, uh, goes under the name IKKT model, which um, is kind of an analog in these kind of theories. Um, in the research talks, there have been many other theories mentioned. And since I uh, was asked to talk about matrix theories, um, but I cannot cover all of these like the SYK or now uh, what Tony has taught us about of this twisted Eguchi Kawai models, which have some relations to these kind of studies, but are um, a different topic. And there are a large number of different motivations to study this. I will discuss this uh, concerning the lattice motivation. And in the following, I only give a very brief outline of why these models have been considered in string theory and gauge theory. Um, the first derivation was actually, uh, or the first application in the context that we are interested here was in the paper by David uh, Hopper and Nikolai. Um, uh, and it was to derive a quantum mechanical description of supermembranes. Uh, the idea here was that while string theory naturally lives in 10 dimensions, uh, theory of membrane would uh, live in 11 dimensions. And one wants now to, to study uh, in a similar way that one uh, studies string theories, now a, a theory of this higher dimensional object. 
Um, so instead of this string-like uh, solutions, you have this black membrane. And um, you, the hope is, of course, that 11-dimensional supergravity might be obtained then uh, from quantizing this membrane. So similar, uh, a similar or a generalization of what has been done in 10 dimensions for the string series. In the citations graph here of this paper, you see that at first this idea was kind of well appreciated. Then there was a certain drop, which I will explain uh, uh, in a minute. Um, and a um, uh, of interest in this kind of theories. And then there was a sudden spike um, where all of this has uh, gained uh, very much of interest uh, in, the, in the research community. And then it went down, but it plateaus still at a rather high level. So there is, uh, as you can see already from this graph, there's quite uh, some interest in this in these models. And, at a certain point, they were considered, um, and I will also talk later a little bit why there was a decrease of interest then um, later a little bit. Um, so this membrane theory, as I said, was thought to be a generalization of what we have described in string theory. So um, as you would do in string theory, you would go from Nambugoto formulation then to this kind of poyakov like uh, formulation, which looks similar, except that you now have uh, integration over more dimensions. And one additional term here, constant that, that is added in this kind of um, theories. Um, then you can use the invariances of the theory that you have to derive um, a simpler form and also express part of the derivative in terms of Poisson brackets. And this is done here. And as usually, uh, usual, you have to consider in that case then certain constraints that come basically from the equation of motion of this uh, metric that you have. Um, and um, then you can change the coordinate system in order to solve uh, part of the constraints and this leaves you then with, a, with this kind of Hamiltonian <laughs> that is derived for the, for the membrane in this um, light front coordinates. Um, the most difficult part is this additional term here that you have and which leads to some nonlinear um, equations. Um, compared to string theories. So one might wonder how to quantize these kind of theories. And this was basically the idea of this paper um, by De Witt, Nikolai and Hoppe. And they um, had an idea of regularizing this theory um, by uh, going to, instead of, uh, this kind of coordinates here by going to a matrix representation of these objects here. And this can be thought of um, in a similar way, but if you consider a simple surface like a membrane, then you can show that the coordinates, um, they, um, the Poisson brackets basically correspond to an algebra of SU2 and you can, then express arbitrary polynomials um, in this kind of coordinate system as a certain um, representation of this SU2 algebra in um, n dimensions and to get higher and higher orders in this um, expansions, you need also larger and larger matrices here to represent it. And uh, if you consider a finite uh, matrix size, then this would correspond to um, a truncation of this kind of series expansion. And this leads to a certain replacement rule. So instead of the Poisson bracket, you have now the commutators of the matrices. And instead of this integration over this um, manifold here, you have this uh, trace over the uh, matrices, which of course has to be taken then 
So we have a complete representation in the large N limit. Um, okay, and this leads to this um, regularized um, Hamiltonian that was derived by David, um, Hopper, and Nikolai. Um, and in addition, you have to, of course, also to represent this, this additional constraints that you have on, for this theory. Um, and this leads to, um, you can implement this, of course, in this Hamiltonian formulation if you add an, a, an additional kind of Lagrange multiplier field, which plays then later the role of, um, of a gauge field in this uh, one dimensional setup. And this was only for a bosonic membrane in this case, but uh, you can also do a symmet uh, supersymmetric version. And this leads then to the BFSS um, Hamiltonian that we, or Lagrangian that we have discussed in the beginning. Um, so this is all a very nice generalization of the ideas for string theory now to this 11 dimensional setup. But as I said, there has been a decreasing interest in this um, quite shortly after. And this was, uh, okay, first I want to mention, of course, this was not, I, I said this was the first uh, uh, realization, but there have been some earlier works also in the context of um, quantum mechanical models that have been considered and in that way also, there was also just as a toy model, um, this kind of dimensional reduction uh, considered and also brain action have, have been discussed earlier, but this kind of supersymmetric brain first appeared in this context. But why was this decrease of interest? Basically it was due to a paper by David Lüscher and Nikolai and this was that the observation that this supermembrane was unstable against perturbation. And this comes, the, the basic origin is, comes from this commutator-like potential term, which leads to classical flat direction that you can construct if the matrices uh, commute which is, with each other. And Pictorial, this is always described in terms of a membrane action that is proportional to the, um, uh, to, the, to the area of this membrane and that you can add spikes to this membrane. And if you shrink the radius of the spikes, you can make them arbitrary long without, with a negligible uh, action difference. If you consider now this quantum mechanical model and quantum corrections, you will see that in the bosonic case, they will lift this flat directions. This was his observation in this paper. And then in the supersymmetric case, however, you get a cancellation between uh, the diff fermionic and bosonic contribution. And you get um, again, this kind of flat direction problem. Um, quantum mechanically, this was realized in this paper in terms of the continuous spectrum, that energy spectrum that you have uh, in, in this theory. Later, this was reconsidered by Catterall and Weisman. And in that case, um, there was a more uh, complete discussion where you also include the discussions of the zero modes of this. Um, and what they found is basically that even in the thermodynamic case where you have a slight breaking of supersymmetry, this plays a role. If you consider um, periodic boundary conditions for the fermions, then due to an additional zero mode that appears there, you, uh, this flat direction problem does not play a, um, a role. So it's, it's a very, um, it's more a more subtle um, problem than done in these kind of this discussion, but um, of course the general problem of this instability remains. So what I like in this first part of that I presented here is basically that this is all kind of solid discussion of this um, 
membrane theory. But on the other end, it doesn't, it hasn't led us very far. And this was also the reason why uh, the theory wasn't considered uh, so um, as a viable um, alternative to, to the string theory formulation. Um, yeah, on the other hand, uh, in none of these papers, the word conjecture or something like that appeared, but this changed if you go uh, further in the history of this of these models. Um, and um, it starts with a conjecture about by Witten about an M theory. So you have this web of different uh, string theories that have been derived by um, uh, and you um, and there was of uh, a kind of expectation that in there is some universal picture behind this, and this should be a theory that lives in eleven dimension, and um, only in the compactification limit it leads to the um, type two a string theory. And on the other hand, in the low energy limit, it should reduce then to the uh, 11 dimensional super uh, gravity solution. And this has led to this, uh, to a reconsideration of this uh, kind of 11 dimensional theories. And another um, thing that has also been important is the consideration of D brains. And um, basically you have a DP brain in 10 dimensions um, has been considered and uh, such kind of uh, soliton-like uh, objects are, uh, have the possibility to get uh, open strings attached to it. And these are represented in terms of vector fields. And now you can um, decompose these vector fields according to the transpares and um, directions. Um, of this brain where you attach it to, and you uh, find that you get um, a vector field, which is a U1 vector field. And if you consider N of these D brains, this can be uh, uh, rela um, related to an UN uh, gauge symmetry. And the other components are, uh, what is the brain embedding and this, um, this serves as a kind of scalar fields in this uh, kind of membrane theory. And um, to first approximation, this is then represented in a kind of, uh, in this kind of um, Lagrange um, gene that you can see here. So the uh, way this BFSS model appears in this kind of uh, construction is as a zero brain where you have only a one dimensional um, theory that is left over. Um, of course, these can be looked at from a different perspective. Maybe this has also been discussed in the H gravity duality lectures. Um, and because these brains curve space time and Therefore, you can also see that as, um, as sources in this kind of uh, supergravity context. Um, so the main uh, conjecture that has led to the name of BFSS is, was done um, by Banks, Fischler, Schenker, and Suskin. And um, this was, that the M theory that was this postulated M theory was related to uh, th this D zero brain quantum mechanics that we have already learned about in this construction by David Hopper and Nikolai. Um, and what they considered were, was a, a compactification limit of M theory, which um, uh, should correspond to a type to a string theory, but they considered this in an infinite momentum frame. 
um, where you um, have a, a large momentum uh, in the system in, in, this, in this compactified direction. And therefore, um, if you look at all the objects that are in this type 2a string theory, then only a system of this D0 brain contributes in, the, uh, in this kind of limit. Um, kind of similar construction have also been done uh, in perturbation theory, when you want to, to get rid of vacuum contributions, then also this kind of infinite momentum frames are considered. So um, this is basically the reason why uh, in a similar case here, you, you are led only to a simpler theory that uh, consists of this kind of the zero brain components. Um, now the, uh, and the system should then correspond to N theory if you go to this um, larger compactification radius. And this means that you have to increase this momentum and this momentum means also an increase of this um, N in this gauge theory that it was derived then from this D zero brains. And this also led to a picture of seeing and the, the zero brains as the basic constituents, as the partons of this uh, M theory. And so as the basic building blocks when you, where you can construct this M theory from. Um, so there, just to mention it briefly, there have also been alternative uh, constructions um, which uh, rather consider light um, light like circle compactifications uh, which are achieved as a limit of spatial compactification limits but uh, these approaches that have been tried are nicely summarized also in a paper by Fotoshinsky. so um, there you can find also these explanations of these alternative approaches now the question is we had this um, problem with the instability of the membrane and the question was how is it solved now in this kind of theory and the answer that was derived there was that it should be a kind of uh, seen as this kind of second quantization so it's not like you have um, just one brain configurations but you have uh, different configurations that can be, fo be formed from this kind of um, uh, kind of matrix models and that you can consider different kind of block diagonal representations which, and, uh, which encode some kind of positions of different objects like uh, in the simplest case these are these kind of D0 brains uh, and these um, and all Basically, all these kind of different configurations are contained in this theory. This um, has led also to more recent discussions. So you can find a reference by Masanori where um, problems with this kind of second quantization picture are discussed. Um, and here is also some kind of graphically representation that you have seen also in Strato's talk, basically the um, these diagonal components, which are this commuting part of the matrices should be related to this D zero brain objects. And then you have strings attached to them and this kind of um, interact that lead to some kind of interaction between these these kind of objects, and then you have different configurations that can be built in in this theories, and you can consider them, for example, as a kind of semi classical background that you can consider to study this series. Uh, in the earlier considerations of the theory, this uh, one has derived try to derive also this 11 dimensional supergravity from these uh, interactions um, where you use this kind of block diagonal objects um, as a 
as a background, and then you perform calculations, perturbative calculations in background field gauge and compare them to the 11 dimensional supergravity. And it has been found that you get the linearized gravitational interactions um, from the one loop effects in this theory and that you can also get some nonlinear interactions um, have been derived from this higher loop calculations. Um, there are, are in the literature questions about how general this picture is and whether one can really generalize it because usually this is done at, at a finite n. Um, how well defined is the large n limit of these computations and whether at higher loops you get some problems uh, with the uh, supergravity picture here. Um, so this brings me, so this is basically um, the, the history of one set of motivations for, for, or a large set of motivations for studying this kind of uh, matrix models, uh, this BFSS conjecture. But of course, then there's also the, uh, these theories can also be considered as a low dimensional, um, realization of the gauge gravity duality. Um, usually one considers this in, in four dimensions and there is, as you know, this uh, equivalence between n equals four um, SUN super young moles with uh, certain gauge coupling and type 2b string theory and um, on this ADS5 cross S5. Um, and um, you can then relate the, the radius of this uh, to the um, gauge coupling, and um, you can find a relation between the gauge coupling and the um, string uh, tension uh, and the string coupling constant and then also to the string length and the, uh, um, and the, uh, and this parameter N, this is encoded in the TOF coupling here. Now, one usually considers this uh, in this classical supergravity limit where you go to large N and large couplings and investigate the theory in this limit. But of course, there are also other limits that you can study you can study this um, just going to the large n limit and keeping the coupling constant fixed, or um, um, or you in the, this correspondence should work in a more general case. So it should give you, in principle, a definition of uh, the quantum gravity theory that is behind this kind of um, so about this non-perturbative part also of this um, type 2b string theory. Um, this can be rephrased now in this, in terms of this more general DP brains and um, as has been done here, uh, these people. Um, and what you find um, is that you have, uh, certain regimes where you can also find a relation which comes basically from this dimensional coupling. And this is related to something that um, appears at a, as an energy scale uh, in, in the metric that I've shown before and uh, can be related then to the kind of field theory um, excitations, so a kind of distance of this D0 brains that I uh, mentioned in this, of this brains that I uh, discussed before. And um, you can find then also uh, in this decoupling limit, a region where you can connect this to the supergravity region. So in the, uh, comparison to M theory, this provides you in a certain range also with an alternative uh, representation as a kind of low dimensional realization of this, uh, of this 
uh, gauge gravity duality. And here's a kind of picture of this diagram um, that was also shown by Stratos, where you have a certain region where you can apply this uh, duality. And then th there's expected an, another region where you where this 11 dimensional theory uh, comes into play and where you have this connection then to uh, the M theory. Can I ask a quick question about this plot? Yeah. What, what is that horizontal dashed line? Um, so basically if you um, at a certain value, this is related to this effective coupling which should get small and then it, um, it should be a region where the perturbative um, theory comes into play. And, and this is on the other hand then related to this um, effective coupling here. So there's perturbative super Yang mills on the left and also has to be above the line. Uh, yeah. Sorry, that's super QC quantum mechanics. Okay, so I see. Okay, and uh, yeah, and in the um, so in the end, I will just briefly mention also this um, these other models that have been considered, um, and this um, the derivation of this uh, modification that I mentioned in the beginning, this uh, BMN model. Um, is basically something that um, in effect adds a potential to this flat direction and therefore stabilizes uh, the, th the theory. Therefore, if you want to study these theories in the, in the context of, uh, of gauge gravity duality, this um, has an advantage of keeping um, at least part um, of the original symmetries, but with regulating the flat direction. Um, this model still has some um, additional um, different vacuum configurations that are possible, um, which uh, correspond to these uh, uh, some fuzzy sphere configurations. And the der derivation was actually done in a kind of um, uh, plane wave background, which in uh, N equals four super young moles corresponds to um, a large momentum along this um, S5 um, uh, sphere. And um, yeah, and this also has some, some relation to, to a certain, uh, to M theories in a, cer in a certain background. But um, I will rather consider later this as a way to, to deal with the flat directions in a, in, a well, in a controlled way, which is done in the simulations. Um, and then there, as I said, um, in this kind of matrix model context, there has also been done, um, uh, suggested even a model with the, where you go, completely reduce the models to zero dimension. And this is this uh, AKKT uh, model, but this has been derived from a different uh, context. Uh, and uh, in fact, from type 2B super string action. And uh, it uh, here also in, in these kind of matrix eigenvalues, um, should be uh, encoded uh, the geometry and also multi-string states are expected to contribute in this kind of uh, theory. Um, now, um, as you have seen also in this publication graph that I uh, shown in the beginning, there have been slightly decreasing interest later after this first derivation of this M theory conjecture. And if you go through the literature, the open question are there, um, of course, that you, one wants to get more insights into the phase transitions and also more checks how well, uh, there's a question of how well controlled the large N limit is. 
And so one can group basically these questions into three possible um, general groups. One is that one could address if one gets a better control on the theory and is able to simulate this on the lattice. So um, to simulate, uh, to check the gauge gravity duality and to get more insights into the strongly coupled regime. And also one can check this uh, large N limit then in more detail. Then there are questions which are related to um, also some conceptual issues and but that could uh, be addressed maybe also with the context and um, the background of some, some lattice simulations that one does. And this is how to um, identify the full brain spectrum of the, uh, of the string theory in this kind of um, M theory setup. And also how one um, basically obtains then the, the space-time geometry from these matrices. And then there are some general issues that have been raised, um, which um, are related um, to the more general foundations of this uh, matrix models. Um, so that they are basically formulated here uh, in, in flat space-time. And that one uh, has to, uh, and that maybe this kind of matrix model does not show enough of the principles of the underlying gravity. So all this kind of gravitational, uh, all the kind of uh, principles of the gravitational theory should somehow be better encoded in these matrix models. This has been raised as a general critics, but it's, it's rather about aesthetics here in this case. So maybe this is something that we uh, can, these kind of questions that we can discuss here as well. And uh, I want to add the, end this first part uh, with uh, some statement that has been uh, brought forward by, um, uh, on, a, on a string theory conference by about the, the future of, uh, physical mathematics. And this basically says that um, this uh, question about M theory is um, still on debate. So we still have no fundamental formulation of M theory. And a good start that was recognized was this uh, matrix model approach by Banks, Fischler, Schenker, and Suskin. And that this should, uh, and that we have every reason to expect that this theory produces the correct scattering amplitudes of the 11 dimensional supergravity multiplet. But uh, um, matrix theory still got, does not give us the whole picture. And this, um, and the last statement is, I think, the most important that. Um, what is criticized here is that it um, has not led to much new significant mathematics. So this basically tells us uh, a few things. So first of all, how um, much uh, the string theorists expect from their theories, namely that basically they solve all the problems of formulating uh, quantum field theories in a mathematical profound way. And therefore, you need some more emergent mathematics also from a form formulation of, of the fundamental theory. And the other thing is that um, if we want to study these kind of things numerically, it's, it's quite important to have also exchange with the conceptual issues and with the mathematics behind this theories to arrive at new conclusions and maybe um, new applications for these kind of theories. Okay, so this ends first part. Um, maybe I stop here and um, ask for questions. If there's enough time, I can also go a little bit into uh, start with the matrix formulation.
okay uh, so suppose uh, if you want to study uh, a theory in four dimension then we need to compact from type to be string theory then we uh, compactify it on six fold for example uh, type to be string theory on ads five times s5 background if it is compactified on six fold then it will give uh, n equal to four supporting angle theory in four dimensions right so uh, similar thing happened in matrix model as well um I I am yeah I have read about some some uh, theories that have tried to to uh, derive also the compactifications in, in matrix model, but I'm not so so familiar with this kind of. So like uh, procedure it is the same as the uh, ADS CFT uh, duality, or it is different in matrix model. And I mean, uh, to study four dimension theory, we need to compactify on six fold, right? Um, but these are here, these are uh, one, just a one dimensional oh, theory. Okay. So maybe uh, uh, if, if you are compacting on 10, 10 dimensional manifold, then we are getting this uh, one dimensional theory. So fields are just replaced by matrices in this model. Um, so these are kind of, uh, so these are kind of two different motivations. So this in the membrane theory, you have this replacement of fields by matrices. Okay. But um, in this kind of uh, duality picture, you you have basically this reduced model from from ten dimensions, um, reduced analogs of of n equals four and in, in four dimensions, or n equals one in ten dimensions. Okay. Uh, if we want to study a non-supersymmetric theory, then what do we have to do on the uh, uh, compact, um, compactification, for example, uh, like uh, it was given by Edward Witten that if we compactify a theory on some uh, a temporal circle, if we impose anti periodic boundary condition on the temporal circle, then we will obtain this non symmetric theory. Um, yeah, I mean, these kind of derivations that I've shown here rely of some kind of supersymmetry that is in, in the theory. So, um, yeah, um, and I will also discuss later on here only realization where you have intact supersymmetry. Okay. Uh, there might be some analogs um, where you also break supersymmetry, but uh, yeah, this is a different kind of setup. Oh, okay, thank you. So just like an equal for young mills, those ADS5 process five, there's some theories in three dimensions that lead to these ABJM constructions, right? This is something that gives ADS4 cross some quotient of the sphere. Um, so, so I think that with regards to this comment, we're a little bit better off than matrix theories in terms of all the formulations of M theory. But the, the real question is, um, do these, when, when these are reused, do they also lead to interesting theories or is the chern simons problem unsurmountable? When, when... Um, I think they, at least for the latter, they, they cannot be directly implemented there. But yeah, this is a problem with these kind of chern simons uh, theories. But um, yeah, apart from that, I don't know whether they have um, other theoretical applications, whether you can use other methods just well, people use localization to find all kinds of interesting things in those, and it works more or less. So there, there are some applications there. Uh, if you, if you put your sort of lattice field theory hat on, uh, you you can think of these things. I would think as certain kinds of discretizations, and then the question would be if there's critical points in which different. Of different models lead to the exact same theory at that critical point. Are there examples of that? Um, I mean, a fuzzy sphere is a discretization in one space, you know, a matrix model with a matrix is a discret. I mean, so I think there must be some cases where you would find the same physics at a critical point. Um, no. Yes. Uh, well, um, this, this is, um, I mean, these kind of theories here are considered in the large and limit here and and i have done this derivation of the you know, maybe that makes it different but i mean you know 
when you finally get down to a discrete theory, you assume that you are having a cutoff, which is not physical, but it doesn't mean that you can't get to the physical point. So I'm just asking whether this kind of thing has happened between two different models, which are apparently different, except for at some point. Uh, you you mean basically if you go, if I go to the large n limit whether this is a well defined procedure well, because it it corresponds to a kind of um, discretization of this uh, the, of this there's many parameters to discretize a, a problem in right like I agree the large n limit is a little bit um, more tricky because it's kind of a topological separation right yeah anyway just curious whether there's points where you found two theories to have the same critical properties. We, we can maybe discuss it later. And... Can I? So, so there was discussion about like flat directions um, in this bosonic case. So about flat directions in the bosonic case, and uh, there was a comment that um, those can be lifted by some sort of quantum effects. We have seen the mass deform, adding mass to that lifts flat direction. So are we, I mean, is in literature some sort of other studies instead of adding mass or something that uh, that has been done to lift flat directions in these one dimensional models? Yeah, I, I, at, at a later point, I will discuss a little bit, but basically um, these kind of um, calculations have, all been done with a kind of additional potential usually. I mean, there, there are some examples where simulations have some, um, so basically, I mean, you can get away with the fact that you use, um, uh, that you are in a regime where you get metastability. This is used also in, in um, many of the simulations. And usually if you go to the large end limit, this metastability tends to be uh, enhanced. So you can start with some, uh, at some point where you don't have, are in a configuration with a large um, expectation, with a large um, value of the scalar fields in this flat direction. And then you, you stay basically the complete simulation in this regime. Then um, in the low temperature limit, this um, gets more problematic. Um, we have seen that uh, it helps if we start with a confined configuration, and this also leads to a better stability of this flat directions. And uh, but eventually, um, if you want to have a well-defined limit, uh, limiting mathematically limiting procedure, you would have to regulate them, and you would have to add a kind of mass term, or uh, sometimes it's even a um, uh, a kind of infinite potential that is added by just um, uh, just reflecting basically something that goes into this this flat direction. Thank you. Um, so there are different strategies, but um, yeah, if you are not in a in a regime where you have um, meta stability, then you you need to add some kind of additional terms to the action. So this is probably a silly question from me um, related to, you mentioned that the IKKT matrix model could be considered a, a P minus one theory where the dualities earlier on developed in the later nineties related these P plus one dimensional systems to DP brains. Is, is there a sense in which there's a D minus one brain um, we can look at from IKKT? <laughs> It is, it is usually described in this way, but the original derivation at least was, was a different motivation. So it was, yeah, derived from, from the string theory setup, which is, yeah. Okay. 
maybe a last call for questions at, at this point, and then Georg can move into the next uh, chapter. So um, basically, um, I want to start now a little bit with um, discussions how to simulate these theories on the lattice. And uh, compared to this statement that we had before, um, that, may, that this does not lead to new mathematics and maybe M-theory formulation should be done differently. One advantage certainly of these kind of matrix models is that one can really put hand on, hands on things and uh, investigate their properties. So in contrast to all of these um, derivations um, and conjectures about dualities, one can really um, investigate on a computer these kind of theories. And there are a, a large number of motivations to study these theories, um, to improve our understanding of this M theory, then of course to test also gauge gravity dualities in this lower dimension, dimensional setup. And um, then there are also some more technical motivations, like if you want to study certain fermion algorithms, then it might be interesting to, to consider these kind of theories as a first playground for uh, maybe then applications towards QCD. Um, now, the first question is, how, of course, how to realize uh, supersymmetry on the lattice. And David uh, has given a talk. and. I won't uh, therefore repeat everything, especially um, considering the four-dimensional case, but I just want to summarize um, the outcome and then also discuss some realizations in, um, in supersymmetric quantum mechanics to learn later on also what kind of different simulation techniques have been used um, in case of the BFSS model. Um, so in general, how one can realize uh, any kind of symmetry on the lattice is either by an explicit breaking, like we have for flavor-like symmetries and also other symmetries, which means you basically translate the symmetries into this Euclidean lattice theory, and uh, therefore you can explicitly realize them. Then you have also the possibility to have a, what is called a Ginsburg-Wilson-like relation of the symmetries, which is done for chiral symmetry, which can also cannot be directly implemented on the lattice, but instead you have, but you have a kind of controlled breaking that you can add to uh, on the lattice theory, and that ensures that you you approach the correct continuum limit. Basically, it's a randomization group step that tells you how to translate from a continuum theory to a perfect lattice theory, the symmetries um, of the continuum. And then there are accidental realization of symmetries. That means you have realized, you, you have not realized the symmetry, but in the continuum limit, it will be uh, recovered. Um, without um, any problems. And this is typically realized if you have a, a subset of the symmetries realized on the lattice. It's, it's the fact that you have for space-time symmetries. Um, basically, this space-time symmetries uh, that you have on the lattice, this hypercubic symmetry, um, restricts any kind of operator that can uh, lead to a breaking um, in the continuum limit, um, so much, uh, and only irrelevant contributions um, survive, and therefore you get a completely intact uh, super, uh, intact symmetry in the continuum limit. And then there's the last part, which is a kind of subset of, of this, uh, which is in the case when uh, you have broken the symmetry, but you have, don't have enough symmetries on the lattice to ensure that you get the correct continuum limit. And this is, in this case, you uh, need to fine tune the symmetries, which means you have to add symmetry breaking terms to the um, action. 
in order for compensating uh, this, this breaking. And you have to tune the parameters according to word identities or some other signatures um, of the symmetries. Um, and supersymmetry is, of course, uh, related to the space time symmetries, and therefore um, it's broken at, on any finite lattice. And uh, you can try to explicitly realize this, but this would lead, um, as I will show in a minute, uh, as I will show, yeah, maybe today or tomorrow, um, that the um, explicit realization leads to a non-local um, action on the lattice. So you can realize supersymmetry on the lattice, but this would lead to some non-local lattice action. Concerning a Ginsburg-Wilson-like relation, unfortunately, this has not been found. Uh, solutions to this Ginsburg-Wilson relation have not been found so far. And um, it's basically related to the difficulty also with space-time symmetries. If you want to realize them in a Ginsburg-Wilson uh, sense, this uh, leads to, to uh, problems um, with this kind of renormalization procedure that you used to derive the symmetries on the lattice. Um, and in case of accidental realization, there are certain theories where you can uh, realize, and basically David has introduced them and discussed them in detail, um, where the subset of the, um, of this different, um, of the symmetry can be realized uh, on the lattice. Or in some cases, like N equals one supersymmetric Young Mills theory, there you have a relation, um, their supersymmetry is basically closely connected to, to the chiral symmetry. So if you have chiral symmetry, um, then this symmetry already restricts any possible um, operators that could spoil your supersymmetric continuum limit. And this leads to this, again, this accidental realization of supersymmetry in the continuum limit. Um, the generic case, however, is that you have to, to do some fine tuning and to, to ap approach the, the supersymmetric continuum limit. Due to all of these problems, um, many different uh, supersymmetric um, lattice actions have been derived and discussed in the literature, and these uh, involve quite non-standard lattice approaches. So you have seen in the case that David presented this kind of non-standard lattices on which these theories are formulated. Um, and in more general case, um, you have uh, a large number of different approaches, even if you consider this one and two dimensional theories uh, that are related to this matrix model discussions. Um, yeah, I can um, maybe, so um, I can start a little bit with this discussion of, of different um, possible supersymmetric approaches um, by discussing supersymmetric quantum mechanics, which is closely related then also to this BFSS model. So, um, or maybe, uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe I, I will stop here and, and continue then uh, uh, the next time because I would like to discuss this and then also the, the BFSS counterparts of these kind of realizations. That makes sense. And it's also useful to have another opportunity for more questions and discussions because due to the scheduling of the uh, program, we won't have the dedicated slot for discussions and questions on the lectures that we had at the end of the days last week. So are there sort of further questions beyond that first round we went through the end of the matrix model section. There's one up in the back that I can run the mic up to. So um, 
uh, these BS, BFSS matrix models are Hermitian valued, right? Uh, yes, the, yes. So can I can one uh, uh, analyze them using this eigenvalue de density analysis? Defining eigenvalue density analysis in large and limit. Um, so the, do you mean uh, if if one can use basically the the um, eigenvalues to diagonalize the Hamiltonian? Um, yeah, the, these kind of uh, approaches have been also used for for the BFSS model case, um, where you uh, you might you have uh, usually a certain basis of states is considered, and then you diagonalize in this base, basis this uh, Hamiltonian. So this kind of variational approaches have been uh, studied. In fact, this um, discussion of the um, of this instability of the membrane also um, is basically um, done in this quantum mechanical setup. And um, uh, um, so there was this paper by Minwala and others where they considered gauge theory on S3 cross S1 and they basically put the theory as a unitary matrix ensemble. Uh, yesterday, Stratos is referring to that paper where he discussed the phase diagram of string theory on ADS5 cross S5. Mm -hmm. So how do these two models relate? Okay. Um, yeah, maybe we have to discuss this later because I, I to know what kind of reference you are. Uh, uh, basically, you refer to this paper by Aharoni and Ofer and other peoples, right? So, that model is also used as a dual or a matrix model dual for discussing this gauge gravity duality. I just wanted to connect like how do these things related to each other. So um, the the phase diagram of uh, ADS5 versus 5 and n equal 4 super young meals was discussed by this paper from Aharoni, Minvala, Papadadimas, etc. And actually, they tried to uh, motivate how what is the gravity duals by analyzing the phase diagram of n equal four super young mills. And then later after this, I saw another diagram, which is what we propose for uh, the BFSS. But it's not really established. It's uh, ongoing work. We try to understand. Uh, what is the phase diagram of the matrix model? And this, in principle, uh, can have a generalization to arbitrary dimensional uh, super young mill theories. So it's an ongoing work. We don't really know the phase diagram, but we just have a proposal. But like, are these two matrix models a description of some same theory, or are these related to some parameter coupling limit or something? So. ADS, so CFT for n equal four super young mill, it is type two B string theory, and matrix model is type two A st uh, super string theory, and the low energy limit is the super gravities. So, like the phase diagram I'm getting from that mat unitary matrix model, and the diagram I'm getting from this BSFS matrix model, are they explicitly related to all gauge coupling limits? Like of coupling limit or just some cases? No, I think there are different theories. So one is again in type 2A super string theory. The other one is in other dimensions in type 2B super string theory. It might be possible that you can use T duality and compactify one to get the other, but it's, it's not really clear, at least not to me. Thanks. More questions or comments? You're not seeing any. I think we may all be in need of some coffee. So let's thank Georg. <laughs>